So today we are going to understand what is our complete framework with a simple example shell. We have seen pieces of our framework. What is the need of the algorithm analysis and how do you do algorithm analysis now? What is the notation we are going to use it up? And, and all these uh, phases, some of the phases of what they call our framework we really understood. But we take a concrete example to go through the complete walk through our framework here to get the feel of what do you mean by the problem solving in reality. So as usual, we start with uh, one of the problems here. Let me do the problem statement here. So given an, an array consisting of n integers So in which each element is between 1 to n minus 1. Find an efficient algorithm that returns any duplicate integer exist in the array. Let's understand the meaning of the problem statement. I just go read the problem one more time. Given an array consisting of n integers in which each element is between 1 to n minus 1, find an efficient algorithm that returns any duplicate integer exist in the array. Let's take some input to really get it, meaning of the problem here. We give some input here, let's say n equal to 5. So our range will be definitely element range 1 to 5 minus 1, 1 to 4. Let's take a simple example, your 5 element array. So first element could be 4, next element could be 2, next element could be 3, next element could be 1. Now that's only possibilities, one of them must repeat here, let's say 2 might be there. The expected answer here is output is 2. So in this case, there's only one duplicate. Let's take one more example. This time, I take n equal to 6. A range is 1 to 5. Let me pick 6 elements. 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, there is a 5. There is a 4. Let's say 2. Again 5. Again 3 here. 2. 3 plus 3, 6. So you can see in this array here, we are satisfying our requirement. Each element is between 1 to n minus 1 range, 1 to 5. Each element is 1 to 5. But repetition you can see, 4 is repeated, 2 is repeated. All I am asking here is any one duplicate. In this case, you can return output either 2 you can return up or you can return up 5. Any of them is fine. So that's what the problem is uh, asking us to solve. So here, the element range is 1 to n minus 1. You got to find up an efficient algorithm that returns any duplicate integer. So if, if you have multiple duplicates, more than two, any one of them is fine. So how do we really attack this problem? So if you recall our framework, so always we start with the problem. So then get deeper into the problem, understand the problem. Then in the second phase, we got to think of solutions now. So by looking at this problem, what is that first working thought which we get into our mind here? Let's bring up the patterns in our memory here, whatever we have it up to get a working solution here. If nothing is there, let's start, look at the problem, understand the problem more deeper, at least work, one working solution, always you can bring it up. The way I'm returning up two or in this case two or five, so surely my, our mind is doing up some kind of a process to really giving up this answer. Let's get out of that idea and see, so how do you really make it as what they call more systematic in nature. Sure. So let me write that as solution number one. Solution number one. So let me rewrite the data to understand how do you really get the answer. Sure. 4, 2, 3, 1, 2. So our n is equal to 5 in this case here. The range is definitely 1 to 4. Now, how do I really got an answer to him? If you just look at this clearly, one simple way of finding up two is repeated is, I, start, I can start with four, 
Now I'm checking up 4 is available in the next slot. I'm looking at all the elements which are coming after 4. It's not matching, not matching. So 4 is not repeated, hence not a duplicate. Now I'll take 2. I don't have to look back because this comparison is already done. So look forward. So no match, no match. But here we got a match. Once you got a match, return 2 as a duplicate. That means one simple systematic process you can build it out. Here is take each element, compare all the elements which are uh, coming after that. If there is a match, we got a uh, you know repetition and that hence duplicate. If not, continue with the next element. So this is the idea which we can able to give up guaranteed working solution. Let's take much more uh, what they call a bigger size example here. Let's say so four six here. Now let me give seven. Next is 8, maybe my array size I am giving is n2, 9, n equal 9, range is 1 to 8. Now 3, then is 2, so then I will give it as 1, total 3 plus 3, 6, 7, there is one more, so 5 we are going to give it up, so still array, one more element I need to give, one of them must repeat here, so let us say 4 is repeated or 5 is repeated. So, the problem statement, if you understand carefully, definitely there will be at least one duplicate here. Since size is 9, range is one lesser here, one element, one of them must repeat here. So, so there is no such case where we don't have a duplicate for this specific problem. Now, you can see here, if you apply our strategy, take one. So, all the elements which comes after one, keep comparing, no match, no match, no match, no match. No match. Then take 4, compare here, compare here, continue this. Then no match, 6 and 7, 8. Maybe in this case, the last but one element 5, when I compare forward here, we got a match. That's where I'm returning 5 as a duplicate. So this, this could act like a worst case. So to really understand how good this algorithm is really doing it up, we, we know from previous sessions that, so we, we are going for worst case analysis here. Maybe if one would have been immediately available somewhere here, so that would have been a best case for that. But the, the benchmarking are always we take what is the right way to really understand complete algorithm performance is its worst case performance. That, that, that gives a guaranteed performance, we can say. That's why, so this algorithm, if you want to really get feel of how good it is behaving it up, what input this algorithm really behaves worst way, this guaranteed performance we are able to give, get it out. So, now here in this case, we are really doing a poll only when you come last but an element here, we got an answer here. This is the worst case scenario. Let's try to label this idea and also we try to analyze this algorithm to really get a clarity how good is really, uh, you know, is behaving it up. So solution one, since it's like a naive strategy, we, we really call this as naive or a brute force. But how do you analyze our dimensions now? We, we saw from previous sessions now, there are two dimensions or matrix we should analyze for every algorithm. So one is time dimension, other is space dimension. They are the two matrix. So for every algorithm, theoretically we always analyze. Before writing a code, we try to do that to filter out so non-useful solutions and we pick a few of them after filtering it up before going for actual coding and evasion. So here, what is the time complexity of this algorithm? What is the space complexity of this algorithm? We want to understand. Again, we, if we recall, what is the meaning of time complexity? We want to analyze theoretically without dependent on any hardware, operating system or language. We know that time is always the number of low level operations here. Here in this logic, what is that low level operation we are doing up? If you look at, so first we are taking this element, we are comparing. Then we take this element, we compare. This guy keep on comparing. The core operation here is a comparison, which is surely a low-level operation for any kind of processor. How many comparisons, maximum, worst case we are going to do it up, is going to be guaranteed performance. That's why our time complexity, which is system independent, uh, what they call analysis, is really giving up. Uh, so, so now we want to really analyze that. That's where we'll try to analyze how many. First guy, I may require almost all n minus one comparison in the worst case. Second guy, n minus 2 comparisons. Third guy, n minus 3 comparisons, and so on. Last but one, we need one comparison. 
this is surely a maximum shape that's where we write it as maximum shape so how do you really so you know get an expression for this n minus 1 multiplied by n by 2 so which is nothing but less than or equal to n square minus n by 2 we know from our notation this is nothing but big of n square even more tighter bond we can write theta so you refer to other videos we discussed the symbols now you get a clarity on why I use theta shape this is the time complexity of the first algorithm what is the space complex to require for this algorithm shape again to recall space means now we are not interested about how many exact number of bytes because each hardware a word size is different that's why space when you say it up how many number of words extra this algorithm require to get this logic you know implementable shape so that's where space if you look at here first element will take it up we got to compare maybe one index variable can help us to move on through the remaining uh, part of the array so the same thing carries for every element so few variables constant number of variables are enough here we write that as c units now let me rewrite here space complexity is c units again this we analyze when you really write into notation it is big of one that's why in summary our algorithm one solution one so we'll take time complexity as theta of n square spaces constant here so is it a good algorithm for production grade systems here when n is going bigger and bigger here the scale of this algorithm how would it is so theoretically we got n square but let's let's experience the coding of this to see what do you call the scale of the n square algorithms here let's move on to the coding now let's look at how to really transform this into the first solution first algorithm into what do you call our language of java so here you can see array problems here so just created one empty project now under src let's create up a class to express this solution here for better organization let me give the package com dot alg dot this we call it as top 20 basic dot array problems here now the class name is we are really what do you call duplicate we're finding duplicate that's where find duplicate main for testing here let's let's express the solution one so since we're converting the algorithm here what is input here what is an output so let's make a prototype so public here static so static is like a global methods so here for expressing the simple algorithms here we don't need a object oriented programming style a simple structured programming simple methods are more than enough here that's why i'm going to static in java which gives such capability to write a global methods so public static integer now find duplicate here. one so it's first solution the input is array here so that's all they're giving it up now what is our solution we take the first element you got to compare with all the elements so coming after that so start with what they call i index zero here so now all the elements which comes afterwards j starts from i plus one j goes to the end of this array here plus plus j what do you do here if that first element which is in of i that's how we access ith element in array is equal to in of j we got a match then we found an answer written in of i so if not if the inner if the for loop completely there is no match for i or zero index element now again i move to the first element again look forward from that index that means this process is not just for one element we got to repeat for all the elements even let me declare i also integer i zero i less than here in dot length plus plus i now so let me close this process if nowhere this match is available so we got a written some special value this never happens in our current example because we know that at least one duplicate will be there but in programming since my method is already uh, you know we declared as integer written type you must do that to avoid the compile error ratio that's where so let me return some special value i'm going to return up integer dot uh, the min value here. 
smallest integer possible on Java uh, in Java platform. Ideally speaking, it's hardware dependent in a way, but in Java the constant is integer dot min value. Let me just so format it. So this is what first solution now. But how good it is doing it? Uh, is it first we'll check the correctness, then we'll look at scalability. Let's go to main method. Let's build up some test cases to see the correctness. So we don't want to write any manual test cases here. Ideally, any method you write up in realistic product in Avasia, you must write a bunch of automated test cases here and which can able to check the correctness without any intervention or manual intervention. Here. That's why from the first problem, we try to what they call take that kind of style, how to build automated test cases. So I want to know the size of the array here. So let's take integer dot parse. So ARGS of 0 here, end of this. Now we got n. So let's create an array here. So integer array, in is equal to new integer size n. We got an object, the pointer is an invariable. In Java we call it as a reference here. Now we got an error in array here, but what values you want to fill it up? So so let's see, anyway we are using worst case as a way to estimate performance now here. Let's build that worst case scenario. What kind of input will, will be giving worst case? Already we discussed. So what kind of input really can act like a worst case here? Let me create that kind of test case now. So we will write a separate method to fill that array. Static void test case 1. I will give the array. Let this method fill up the array for worst case possible input. So let me do that integer i equal to 0 so i less than in dot length plus plus i now what should be the element uh, what do you call inside in array in of i is equal to let me start with i plus 1 that means 0 to index i am keeping 1 first index i am keeping 2 because our element should be 1 to n minus 1 so except the last element maybe the last but one element last element sorry I want to skip it in dot length minus 1 so except the last element everything else is filled up here so after filling up so at last element it has to be one repetition now since I'm trying to build a worst case scenario the last element I'm going to replicate uh, last button element we replicate to the final slot so after coming out let's fill up in of phi is equal to what is it so since n minus 1 in dot length minus 1 I'm going to give it up so since i scope is outside a loop let's move this out here in teaser i now this is how the test case one will give up the the required worst case input for us in vision. now we come back now we call this test case one in let's get fill up now we got the input here. so now let's pass this input to our program our first method so find duplicate one in array it returns some value i just display that sys out so find duplicate one so, so this is what we have it up let's test this correctness so it's throwing exception because we didn't give any input so common line argument we should pass size let me give simple example 10 apply run it's giving 9 but let me show you the array also here of test case 1 is finished up let me display what do you call array so array is dot to string here so we are displaying integer here let me display this in let's run this program again now you can see the input here so 1 to 8 is available, 9, 1 to n minus 1, size is 10, 9 is repeated, our written value, our method is returning up the correct answer which is 9. Let me, how many times you run it up, the test case is what do you call, same. You can build other test cases, run configurations, let me change size to from 10 to 100, so apply, run. Now you can see the data here, we got 99 which is repeated and we got exactly this 99. So the program seems to be behaving correctly for this so basic examples now. Maybe you can think of some boundary case testing as well. 
but how, how much scalable is this algorithm here? So since we've written a program, let's look at in practice the scale of this big of n square theoretical solution. Now let me let me give it up what do you call worst case input. In worst, when I'm displaying very, very uh, what do you call higher size, displaying becomes a problem. I'm commenting out, we know it's working fine, but let me take up very big input, 100. Thousand. First, we'll see ten thousand, one lakh. Let me pass one lakh. Apply range. So you can see ninety-nine thousand, ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine is a duplicate. But how much time? Let's clock this time shift. Before this method, let me take here what is the time system time in Java? System dot current time milliseconds. After finishing up this logic here end is equal to system dot current time millisecond. How much time this guy will take it up? Let me write time taken is what do you call plus. Now end is given minus start here divided by since we got a milliseconds I'm converting into seconds now and we want floating point division that's why I'm making this constant as a double type plus seconds. Now let me read on this program. Now you can see that when I'm giving up what do you call in this case one lakh, yeah, one lakh input, we really got it up 1.258 seconds. Now let me increase the size of the input here. Run configurations arguments from one lakh to let's say 10 lakhs. Here. Or before that, let me try five lakhs. So apply run. Now so the Program the method is executing here. Let's see how much time it really takes it up. You can clearly see that there is an observable what they call you know time time lag for file lag input. Here. So the n square in theoretical algorithm here when really converted into program now you can see what they call the the scale. So even for file lags now this much time taking up. This is only small method in a big product. If this method takes this much of time, imagine how much response time gets affected up. So this is where we always look for efficiency here. When n is going bigger and bigger, our algorithms, of course, then program should respond very, very fast. But if any theoretical algorithm takes big of n square complexity, then the impact of that in production grade, you are able to get an experience over here. So you can see 29 seconds, just a small method. 29 seconds, imagine when a customer clicks a call, which really go through a bunch of methods in a way here, how much total response time it will take it up. It's definitely a non so unacceptable issue. Since it's not acceptable, all you got to do here is, is any better way you can solve the problem, and then, which can able to, you know, scale for what they call the larger values of n. So n square algorithms from now onwards, wherever you get it up, this is what we are going to see in practice. Let's, let's, let's discuss about, is there any better algorithms than n square? Then we'll again, uh, you know, experience practically, how would they really do? Let's move on to the discussion.